In search of human yeah. well-being. Human beings trying to be happy. Human beings trying to live well. That is why they turned the planet upside down, isn't it? In some ways, but it's also profit. Human beings trying no. to profit, people so they're want doing pro things that aren't People want profit because that is the only way they can be well. Those who are making uh, losses, are they well? Yeah, <laughs> sort of. But a lot of them, they're, they're already well. They're, they're greedy. They, they've gotten past the point See, of being that well. Is, that and is, now they've <laughs> gotten connected to the idea of accumulating vast sums of money. No, that is being judgmental, calling somebody greedy, because, uh, see, uh, if I have one meal a day, which is my normal, I think I'm doing fine. If somebody else has one meal a day, he thinks he's very poor, he wants two. The guy is having two, thinks he's poor because somebody else is having three. One who has a little home, he thinks he's poor because somebody has a big home like mm -hmm. this. So what is greed and what is not greed? I wouldn't well, I'll like tell you to... what greed is. If you make choices where you know that the thing that you're doing, whether you're distributing a product or whether you're causing an action that is going to be detrimental to human beings, but you cover up the data to hide the fact that it's going to be detrimental because you want to maximize your profit and you don't care about the negative impact it has on people because you're only thinking about money and you're already substantially wealthy. That, by definition, is being greedy, right? Oh, uh, see, by definition, it's like this. Somebody is dreaming of a million dollars, he thinks that is the ultimate goal in his life. But a guy who has a million is wanting to be a billionaire. Right. One who is a billionaire, he looks at somebody who has hundred billion dollars, he thinks at least that much he must have. Right. So I'm saying, instead of being judgmental about this, Human well-being is sought from outside, that is the whole problem. See, human experience essentially happens from within. Whether it's your joy or misery comes from within you, isn't it? Maybe somebody or something can stimulate it from outside, but still it happens within you. Joy and misery happens from within you, pain and pleasure happens from within you, agony and ecstasy happens from within you, every human experience happens from within you. But in pursuit of happiness, we're turning the world upside down. Because this is the case of a... You know, there was an old potato farmer. One day he wanted to eat apples, so he went to an apple tree. But by habit, he started digging for the apples. Till the tree came down on him, because he's a potato farmer. So right now, <laughs> human beings have become like this. They have gotten used to this that they think by getting this, by getting that, by having one more thing and one more thing, they're going to be happy. Yes. But human experience happens from within. If you take charge of your interiority, being peaceful and happy is a natural consequence of that. But for convenience and comfort, we do things outside. To create impact, we do things outside. So this experience of if human beings were naturally joyful by their own nature, they would only do what is needed, nothing more, nothing less. But right now, they're in pursuit of happiness. You can't stop them. Yeah, they are in pursuit of happiness, but they're also, again, in pursuit of profit because it's a number-based system, so it becomes like a game, and you get connected to corporations. When you're in a corporation, there's a diffusion of responsibility because you don't think about your own involvement and in what the corporation is doing. You think about your role, what you do as a job, and then you try to maximize profit, and it's a game that people get wrapped up in. Yeah, but that is... Uh... It doesn't make them happy. You're absolutely correct. No, no, it's in pursuit of happiness, but... Well, it's in pursuit of success. See, uh, most human beings cannot be happy if they're not successful, isn't it? Mm, there's a lot of that, yes. No, and the, then they is... get medicated to help them <laughs> get happy. That's a lot of people. I mean, what percentage of people are not following by the principles that you're espousing, which would, are very natural and very healthy, and they instead follow this corporate structure, the corporate guidelines, they, they follow that path and they're not happy. So what do they do? They medicate themselves. No, today uh, we've come to this place where uh, if you want to be peaceful, you need a chemical. Yeah. You want to be joyful, you need a chemical. You want to be healthful, you need a chemical. Well, you want to be ecstatic, of course there is a chemical. Right. So what is the consequence of this? Why this is happening? One thing is in this generation, one thing that's happened in people's minds is 
the heaven has collapsed in people's minds. The heaven? Yes. How so? See, uh, I've been talking to people, fifty years ago if I spoke to people, and uh, I asked how many of you want to go to heaven, almost eighty percent would raise their hands. Today you go to your university and ask them how many of you want to go to heaven, they'll say <laughs> They think it's a ridiculous question, all right? Nobody mm -hmm. will raise their hand. So in their minds, heaven has collapsed, there's no place to go. So they want to do it everything here, mm, all right? I see. So they have not found how to be joyful and ecstatic within themselves. So chemical usage, initially it became alcohol, then it became chemicals, it's getting stronger and stronger. And uh, you know, so many people dying of those things every, every day and illnesses and it's costing a nation and the world a lot. It's not just in one country, it's, it's going across the world. Law enforcement agencies may be controlling it a little bit, but they can never control it totally because the consumption is mass-based. It is uh, more people <laughs> maybe <laughs> consuming yeah. these things than people eating bread. <laughs> it's becoming like that. Is... So this whole movement, where it's going means, if you do not raise human consciousness, if you do not teach people how to sit here feeling absolutely blissed out within yourself by your own nature because this human mechanism is the most sophisticated chemical factory. If you are a good CEO, you would produce the chemicals that will give you fantastic experience. If you're a lousy CEO, you're giving yourself a bad experience. Yes. Now you're buying chemicals from outside to fix that, all right? So essentially you're a bad manager of your own system. You're not taking charge of this. Why has that happened? Because your education, your society is talking about conquering the world, but never taught you anything about how to take charge of this. Do you agree with yes. me? Yes. The most are in this room, there's so much technology here. In this room, the most complex and sophisticated technology is within your system. Yes or no? Human system. Yes. This is. Have you read the user's manual? There's no user's manual. There is. There is? Yes. Where is it it's at? It's built into the machine. Oh, how do I get it? <laughs> you need to pay attention. You're reading inner engineering. <laughs> Read that carefully. There are. I'm reading it. I'm in the middle. <laughs> I'm at part two. There are uh, pointers as to how to read your own user's manual. Yes. 